All right, good morning. Um, I hope everybody can hear me. Um, we're not going to do any roll calls because we have a fair number of people um, to join. Um, so for those of you who are joining, welcome. Um, Alita and Meseret, I just want to make a test though. You all can hear us well, right? Yes, yes. we can. Okay, yes. great, okay. And wonderful, thank you. Um, so good morning, everyone. Um, this is Karen Kirchnock, the program manager for 2030 Water Resources Group. I'm here actually um, very happily in Lima, Peru. Um, just arrived yesterday, and I'm so pleased to be doing this and joining the team here. Um, just a little bit of background on how we're doing this webinar um, and the background to this. So at our last steering board meeting in Stockholm, um, we realized that it's very difficult to get through updates on all of the programs and all of the, the great work being done in countries by the multi-stakeholder platforms. And so based on the input from the steering board, decided let's try this webinar series so that we could really dig a little bit deeper into, into the work programs of the multi-stakeholder platforms. Um, we did an internal test on it and we thought we would start regionally and then realize that there is so much that is being done in each country that even regionally it is too difficult to cover all of the work and the results. So our approach is to go country by country. Um, over the next hopefully six months, a year, we can get through all of the different countries and states where their multi-stakeholder platforms or ones under development so that we can share with the steering board but also with others. So the, we're recording this series um, and then we'll be able to use that um, to circulate to others as well. Um, I wanted to just in terms of today's program um, briefly, what we're going to do is we have an hour to run through the, the work here in Peru and the multi-stakeholder platform. Um, Cesar and Patrick will be sharing the background on the situation in Peru and the work of the multi-stakeholder platform. Um, we also have Emmy who just joined the team here in Peru. And then also we have Stella who's joining us here from Brazil as we're trying to promote cross-learning between the work um, of the different um, programs of 2030 WRG. Um, the, the benefit we have here in Peru is also we have Mercedes Castro who is the chair of the multi-stakeholder platform and a really active and dedicated chair. She also joined us in New York at the World Economic Forum Sustainable Impact Summit where we had a session on 2030 WRG and collective action. Um, we actually have a steering board meeting this afternoon here in Peru. So Mercedes has been really, really busy pulling together the pieces for the multi-stakeholder platform steering board. So we're really thrilled um, that she can be here and also all of the time and dedication that she gives um, to the multi-stakeholder platform. Um, I'm hoping that um, future webinars, we can also get others from the other countries who are involved in the multi-stakeholder platforms in, involved in the webinars and also promote sharing and cross-learning. I know Mercedes has offered to me also to meet with the chairs of other multi-stakeholder platforms so that there can be cross-learning across the chairs as well. So this is really, really something wonderful that we can help promote um, as we learn and understand how to approach these um, ish, difficult issues um, that the multi-stakeholder platforms are trying to deal with. So let me stop there. Um, we won't cover everything probably that's going on in Peru because we have an hour and there is so much here that um, I don't think even an hour could do justice to, but we'll try to cover as much as possible to give everyone a bit of a sense of the work program and where the MSP is heading into the future. Um, and certainly we'll report back more after we have the MSP steering board meeting today. Um, so let me, with that, let me turn over first to Cesar to give a bit of the background. Hopefully everybody can see the slides um, and we'll be able to share those afterwards as well. So thank you everybody for joining us today. Thank you, Karen. Good morning and, and welcome all of you in the different parts of the world. And just to, uh, to catch on what Karen just mentioned, and I think it's important, you know, to know that part of the success of this MSP, which is vibrant and active, is, is, is the, the quality of the members, no? And, and we just started in 2014. We signed in 2013 with WEF camps to Peru for a, for a Latin American uh, visit, you know, a seminar. And the, the, the agreement was signed between IFC, 
Water Resources Group, the Ministry of Agriculture, and um, and the National Water Authority. So we have that's the framework for our work here. We come when we're invited, so we have an agreement to come. No? Um, just just to mention uh, another fact is that our first work in 2014 and 15 was an hydroeconomic analysis, a piece that was important in knowing was a, a, a way to help the government, the National Water Authority, to prioritize, you know, uh, uh, investments. No, and it was a very interesting tool at that time. You know, they they approve it as a as, as law, but that uh, initial uh, stage helped us develop on a bilateral basis um, a solid uh, relationship with key partners that at the end were the initial part of uh, of, of the of the MSP, the initial MSP that was formed in September 2014. The the great part uh, was that uh, Mercedes Castro, who was a mentor for me in the, in, in, in my in initial learnings on water, um, convened with Mr. Pedro Pablo Kuczynski, who was a, a businessman, you know, and by fortunate, he became president in 2016. So Mr. Kuczynski had been a part of the MSP with Mercedes since the beginning, and when he was a president, he needed to step out because presidents need to focus on, on being presidents. Uh, he nominated five cabinet ministers to be part of this MSP. Therefore, the, the level of the uh, public participation was very high since the beginning, you know. And we have been able since then to maintain, you know, that kind of participation at, at, at the highest level. No? Um, this is a picture of Peru and the Andeans. And, and I think most important for you also is some key facts, you know, about the water challenges in Peru. You know, and, and, and these numbers come from the World Economic Forum, from the World Bank, and from local studies, you know. And, and basically we are um, among the 30 countries that suffer chronic water stress. No? And, and, and as you can see, the need you know, to, 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 to cover you know, water and sanitation for the country is huge, you know, and, and, and we cannot do it through public financing. Basically, uh, it's estimated that public financing you know, uh, will put at least one third of what's needed, you know, and sometimes you know, changes in government, you know, inefficiencies in the public sector doesn't allow for them to act promptly as, as, as they need. Therefore, you know, in, in, in our case, in many of the cases, the private sector role is key. You know, so our role, you know, since the beginning in 2014 has been to convene the private sector, the, the leaders, you know, that can make the difference. You know, so we, we have a very strong uh, steering committee formed, but not only experts on water. No? I would say political influence, people who have a lot of experience in sustainability and former public officials, you know, who are now in the private sector. Um, Another number, you know, that strikes also is that our population is around 30 million. Um, out of 7.4 million are, are rural, and, and you see the number. No? Almost 3 million have no access to water, no? and, and 6 million no access to sanitation. No? And in the case of Lima, we are in the desert. You know, uh, we have a, a population of around 10 million, the, and the effort is to provide access to water. You know, 1.5 million people do not have access to water, and those people pay the highest price per liter. You know, you know, perhaps 10 times, Mercedes, no? 12 to 15 times more than the people who live in this beautiful neighbor in San Isidro, no? where we are headquartered. Um, of course, we have, you know, uh, temporal variability resulting in chronic shortages in dry seasons and frequent floods and droughts. So we need to manage it. We have two years ago suffered a very severe Nino phenomenon no? that caused major damages in major cities in the country. And we have not been able, as a, as a country, to, to put back a, an infrastructure effort, you know? so, so because government has changed three times in the past two years. No? So, so the, the need is to have a much more active private sector, a utilized mechanism and facilities you know, that promote that. No? In our specific case of, of water resources, we promote one facility. And Strati will explain that later, that is helping you know, to bring, not only conscious you know, of the importance to invest for poor, poor people, but also, you know, to be more effective and avoid corruption, which is an endemic, you know, thing in, in the case of Peru. No? As, as many other countries, we have the problem of, of mining influence, insufficient water management, untreated dumping of municipal and industrial solid waste, uh, indiscriminate use of agri agrochemical, further limits available uh, fresh water supply. So, so we have issues that, that are uh, they're, they're repeated in many countries in LAC and in, in, in other parts of the world. But we also have issues of our exploitation of underground water resources, 
I think we have worked on that. We have an experience uh, with, with SUNAS, you know, about that, you know, to, to set up a tariff, you know, to, to industrial users, you know, and to protect the aquifers, and it took a time, but it was an interesting contribution to help companies to not only say, but act sustainable, you know, and that was very important, no? We still need long-term planning, you know, este, but we have, you know, as many countries, uh, a lot of uh, lack of political continuity, you know, in, in the case of Peru, uh, we changed presidents every five years, but due to political circumstances, we've changed presidents, and we got three in two years, you know, and, and the average term of a minister of different sector is perhaps less than a year. That's a difficulty political, the, 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 execution, of, the execution of effective political policy, political policy you know? So, so there's basically a background of Peru, maybe may very similar to many other countries, you know. Um, we're still, you know, uh, target as a worse country, you know, it's, we're, uh, it's expected to worsen if we don't act um, properly. And there's a challenge that we have here, no? And, and, and we have a challenge that, that, that has make us develop a plan. One that is active, that reflects country needs, you know, and that is led by people who are influencers, you know, and, 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 and that's what is making some difference in, in our fight to reduce the water gap. So this is an introduction. Um, I, I, I was in Peru for four years, you know, so that's my introduction based on the experience uh, in, in that, but, but now we have a new country that, uh, manager, a country coordinator, you know, and, and his name is Patrick Huerkin. He has uh, been here for, for, for a year working with us, and, and now he's in charge of the program, so I'll hand it over to you, Patrick, you know, to, to tell us what are you doing here in Peru. Okay, thank you. Good morning, everyone, and uh, thanks for joining this meeting. And thank you, Karin and Cesar, for your presentation and introduction. And I want to explain you about the Water Resources Group in Peru, our activities and achievements during the last year. As Cesar mentioned, the situation of water in Peru is critical because of the access and scarcity. However, however I think that another important fact is the lack of awareness about this, this situation. In general, there is a huge room for improvement and an amazing opportunity to create better conditions in terms of management, access to water and sanitation, and better use of water. In that sense, Water Resources Group, as a multi-sectoral platform, is working on the promotion, action, and leveraging resources from government, private sector, and international cooperation. To understand our work, I think it's very important to share with you our governance and structure. You have a, a slide that des describes this uh, very briefly, but I, I want to, to explain it. We have a steering committee. Uh, it is composed by more than 20 representatives representative from every sector at, at the highest level. We have two ministers, two vice ministers, four former ministers that now are involved in private activities or academic uh, sector, rep representatives from international corporations such as Swiss Development Corporation and World Bank, representatives from private sectors such as the President of Peruvian Business Roundtable or very high representative from mining, mining sector companies or business associations. In general, all of our uh, stream committee members uh, are opinion leaders and have an influence power in its, in, in its sectors with high level contacts and access to key decision makers in, in our country. Uh, as you may know, and Cesar, uh, Cesar mentioned that, um, Peru has changed government authorities three times in the, in the past two years. Even that, our multi-sectoral platform support us to convene the new government authorities that are currently part of our board. No, no, as anterior. Seguimos en una. So under the steering committee guidance, we have created four working groups to promote actions in specific topics to contribute to, to this, the current Peruvian water stress situation. First group is related to, to work for taxes, or obras por impuestos is the name in, in Spanish. Work for taxes is a facility that allows private companies to invest part of their corporate, corporate taxes for infrastructure projects. And this mechanism is very important, uh, has very important advantages in, in terms of uh, management of resources improvement, because the management is, is, uh, is a direct responsibility from private companies, not, not from government. 
reduction in corruption because of the private companies are responsible for the, the project delivery. And to assure high impact because of the investment uh, is in poor, in poor areas. Uh, the second working group is related to the blue certificate. Blue certificate is a recognition from the National Water Authority, uh, and it is to companies that works on sustainable water resources management. And to be selected for this recognition, the companies should accomplish three, three criteria. Number one, measure their water footprint. Number two, develop a reduction plan. And number three, execute a shared value project on their surrounding communities. Our third group is related to climate change and adaption to green infrastructure. And this is a new working group, and the objective is to promote green infrastructure among private sector, cooperation, and government. The Minister of Environment is leading the group, and she uses our uh, multi-sectoral platform to disseminate the concept among private companies and for private sector mobilization through a new initiative to increase water availability. And finally, the fourth group is related to water and mining. Minister of Mining is leading this group, and the objective is to coordinate with government, private companies, and communities in surrounding mining operation areas to have a territorial-based approach project by fulfilling water and social needs and developing value chains to expand local opportunities with a national and international scope. Next, please. In, in this slide, I just want to highlight who is leading each working group. And as you can see, each topic is promoted from the highest level representatives from government. This is an example of how government consider water resources group platform as a neutral space to build up engagement from other sectors. The next. And then as we explained, all all of our activities and working groups are related to Peruvian water uh, situation, and we are focused to deal with worse water scarcity and lack of awareness about water stress. However, every working, group, every working group is also oriented to contribute with global water resources group indicators, giving us specific outcomes and figures related to them. And now, I want to explain in a, in a more detailed way three of our four working groups, giving you more information about processes and results. And talking about the blue certificate, there is a, complica there is a complicated problem because of the lack of awareness about water scarcity and, and efficient management in all sectors. So we, we mentioned that before. But, and private companies don't realize that they have a water footprint and an impact in water availability. So taking this in consideration as a joint idea by Water Resources Group partners, we decided to create the blue certificate, blue certificate to engage private sector in water projects. The Peruvian National Authority decided to lead this initiative and provides an official recognition to companies who meet the following criteria. And I mentioned that before, but I want to highlight that they, they should uh, to measure their, their water footprint uh, they should develop a water footprint reduction project and develop a shared value project related to water in surrounding communities. The certification process takes around one year, and it's becoming more attractive for companies because recently government decided to give a better qualification to certified companies that participate in public biddings for any government purchase or hiring process. After two years, uh, ten, land, 10 large companies have uh, presented their water footprint reduction projects with an estimated investment of $400,000 and reduction of 79 million liters per year and reduction of 137 million liters of non-treated water shedding. But in addition, the share value project of these uh, 10 companies represent an investment of almost $1 million dollars in efficient domestic water use, rural, rural irrigation improvement, water reuse, and public space, uh, and promoting water conservation culture. There are more than 9,000 direct beneficiaries and 20,000 indirect beneficiaries. Numbers are growing rapidly, and we expect to duplicate the number of companies in the next year. 
And this is, this is a, a, a picture of the, the first company, Mexichem, it's an, a Mexican uh, company. Uh, the, the first company that, that obtained this, the blue certification in, in Peru. Then I will, I'm going to explain the work for taxes uh, working group. And it's very important to mention that there, there were two different moments. We mentioned that there is a huge gap of infrastructure and the country needs more than $45 billion for the next 15 years. And Works for Taxes is a very good way to promote investment in infra infrastructure. The first moment of our activities uh, was oriented to enable the environment for change. In 2016, government requested a technical assistance to Water Resources Group to make the facility more attractive for private sector partic participation in water and sanitation projects. Due to the assistance of Water Resources Group, government was able to reduce the paperwork from two or three years to less than one year. And this administrative simplification, among other changes in, in work for taxes regulations, allow government to offer a portfolio of projects in water and sanitation of more than $400 million. Changes in, in, Peru, in Peruvian government uh, have stalled some uh, these these activities, but we continue working, and now we are in the second phase of our our working work for taxes. The second phase uh, is more related to promotion, and we have two allies that are using a Water Resources Group um, MSP to promote more involvement of private companies in water and sanitation infrastructure projects. Uh, the NGO Agua Limpia, or ONG Agua Limpia is the, the name, has signed an agreement with Inter-American Development Bank to promote the identification, design, and impl implementation of 22 projects in water and sanitation in different sectors. <clears throat> the key partners of these initiatives include government, uh, authorities, and cooperation institutions. And the second al ally is, the C is CSR Mining, a local NGO specialized to promote work for taxes projects among mining companies for water and sanitation in rural, rural areas, which are basically surrounding areas of mining, mining operations. As you can see, we enabled the environment and now we are promoting scalability for more private sector engagement, but it is a process. And this is a, a picture with the uh, mining minister when, when we started working with them and giving them uh, uh, technical assistance to, to improve the, the regulations in work for taxes. Another interesting initiative is related to um, mining. And, uh, we, we call this, this initiative the Share Value Project. And it is in alliance with IFC, Pronatura, and government authorities to promote sustainable investment in, in mining sector. As you may know, Peruvian portfolio of mining investment is more than $50 billion. So our economy depends uh, uh, on, on the mining activities. Many of these projects has, have been paralyzed by issues associated to water and social uh, conflicts. Um, Water Resources Group, IFC, and the renowned Brazilian NGO, Pronatura, envisioned a window of opportunity by proposing the government to have a territorial-based approach to ensure minimal infrastructure and basic needs, needs a coverage for local population where access to water and sanitation are the top priority. In addition, and to reach sustainability, the Share Value Platform aims to develop productive chains in these areas of influence, creating local opportunities that make local economic no longer dependent on mining companies. What Resources Group will run the steering committee of this innovative initiative following our model of MSP. And government is, is very interested to, to learn about our experience as, as an, a multi-sectoral platform. Uh, they are totally involved, and uh, they also are um, encouraging the private sector to, to be part of this initiative, local authorities, communities, among other sectors. The first pilot, uh, the first pilot experience will soon start with the recent, recently approved um, project of Keyabeco in the south region of Moquegua. 
And this project has, had been paralyzed for 10 years. And now government is, is counting on this new established uh, share value platform to make this $5.4 billion viable, sustainable, and water responsible that's sharing value and reducing conflict. Cerro Verde is, is the next, this, this picture, Cerro Verde is, is a premier example of a company, a mining company that has made water management resources a priority and has sent an example for other companies in Peru internationally. Thank you, Patrick, and, 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 and I, I think it's, it's a great opportunity, you know, to have our key lessons, you know, our, our lessons learned, you know, from somebody who runs the, 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 the MSP as the chairman, no? and, and, and Mercedes Castro is not only been the, the chairman of us for four years, but she has also been appointed by the president to be the, the Sherpa, you know, to the UN High Panel on Water. So you have this uh, international experience too, and, and I think it will be great to hear from, from Mercedes, her experience of her, uh, as being a chair of 2000 Water Resources Group. Mercedes. Thank you very much to this uh, great team here in Peru, and thank you to the super team in, around the world. Um, for the key lessons, I would say that the first one is that we have a lot to learn. That's the first key lesson. Uh, when we arrived here as 2000, in 2014, yes, um, we, we learned through some polls that we performed that there are some companies in some sectors that still lack uh, about awareness on the culture of, of water. And uh, just to give you an example, for example, let's say the construction sector, there was a very key CEO in a very important company, enterprise, and uh, when we asked him, how does water is um, related to your, to your business? How is this uh, supporting the sustainability of your business? And he said, mm, I don't care too much about water. But you can understand now how important it is to look into what people are thinking and feeling you know, about water in our country. And the two second uh, key lessons, one is, uh, as we read there, that our programs have helped to unlock issues and enhance collaborative dialogues among government, business, NGOs, communities. And, the, and also the, the why, are, although we had three governments since 2014, we still are working with the, with the government. These are related, these two key lessons are related to the programs we are developing. The blue certificate that is related to the how efficiently we are using the water as enterprises to sustain our businesses. And also the second one and very, very important is the mechanism work for taxes. Because the mechanism work of, on, uh, for taxes uh, accelerates public investment with the participation of the private sector. So these two mechanisms are very strongly um, working, uh, making us work with the uh, different governments that are appearing in, in Peru. And um, as a fourth key lesson, I would like to say that I'm very, very happy to see that we are, uh, as Karin said, uh, in a cross-learning process we are uh, very happy to, to complement any efforts that our colleagues are performing in other parts of the world. And we are very happy that we will also learn from them very soon. We will learn more in more detail and later we can discuss it private, privately in a bilateral way. But uh, this issue has to be, I think, very strongly developed. And I think Karin is, is totally convinced on that and is promoting it. So these are basically the, the key lessons. Of course, we have many more, and for sure we will get more when all our participants in these webinars are coming with, with new ideas. Yes, thank you very much. Thank you, Mercedes, and thank you for providing such strong leadership in, in sharing the multi-stakeholder platform. So we've heard a bit about the challenges here in water in Peru, why it made sense to set up a multi-stakeholder platform here from Patrick, some of the different work programs, 
Um, we'll probably hear more in, in the future around the green infrastructure because that's the newest one. Um, and then Mercedes from some of the lessons learned. So we now have a chance for a bit for questions and answers. Before we jump into that, I did want to just highlight. Um, so we're sitting here in the IFC building, actually. Um, IFC has been hosting us the last several years and really thank for the support of IFC. The World Bank office is right across the street, and so we'll be there later today. So as I always say, we have one foot in World Bank, one foot in IFC, and we offer to help build a bridge um, between the public and the private sectors. Um, and we've been working very hard, the team here, in terms of the alignment with the World Bank now that they were hosted by the World Bank but we'll continue remaining sitting here in the IFC. So it really offers great opportunities to find ways, as particularly as the new approaches around maximizing finance for development. As everyone has said, you know, there's not enough resources to deal with the challenges. And at the same time, there's still a lack of awareness of all the challenges. So it's really more, even more important that we get institutions working today together in new and innov innovative ways to try and find how we can bring technology, financing, capacity, all of these things together to solve the problems. So we have some time here now. Um, the, everyone did very well on the time so that we can also offer up for some questions and answers. I have a few myself, um, but um, maybe if I can just start for one and then we'll open it up for the group, just so for those of you on the phone, just think about some questions here for the Peru team. But one, my question is to Mercedes is, my understanding is that the steering committee here meets quite often. Um, every few months. And some of the countries, the steering boards and steering committees meet maybe once or twice a year. And so I was just curious, how has this evolved in terms of the steering committee, especially because it's so high level? These folks who are ministers are have so many demands on them. How do you manage, and does that interest in meeting this often come from them, or how has this evolved in terms of a lesson for some of the other countries where it maybe makes sense to meet maybe only once or twice a year, but I think it's really interesting here that the steering committee, and my understanding is that they want to even meet more often. Um, so I was just curious also how you manage that as chairing it, because I think that also um, you know, has also difficulties in terms of managing that. We have here um, Cesar Fonseca who is a key element. He has uh, enormous competences to make these alliances. And we have now Patrick. So this is a great team, and we are having push and pull. So sometimes, of course, the government call us because they are very interested in these mechanisms of work for taxes, promoting it, and also about the efficiency of water through the uh, blue certificate. And now with the two more additional uh, committees. Um, but we do a lot of visiting in the, in the, in the government, and we are working um, also in special uh, subcommittees. And, and these subcommittees, like one for work, work for taxes, another one for blue certificate, now another one for the greening issue, another one for the, for the mining and the communities, we, they are, these are topics that are so interesting for the, for the development of the, our economy that we really need, uh, we are working on, they really need us and we need them. So we are, um, let's say, every two months practically working with these subcommittees, no? And, but in the interval, we also visit them and meet with the firms, no? Um, by the side of the government, it is necessary because many public employees change from one place to another also. So we are obliged to go and visit the, the new ones, no? This is uh, something that we, we need to do. But uh, yes, I think the most important element is to make them feel that we are ne neutral and that we really are producing um, results, numbers, uh, infrastructure, no? And this is basically what I would say. Can I complement a little bit with that? Uh, is that um, um, the process uh, is a trust building process, you know? So um, one of our, our working group, which is the, the share value platform, is something that we never expected, no? 
the, one, the leaders are the Minister of Economics and Finance and the Minister of Energy and Mines, no? And that requires for them to meet, I mean, in many cases, Patrick, we have met daily, no? When we were negotiating, you know, the importance of the share value platter, we met with the Minister of at 7 in the morning because there was, he was available, you know? So, so what they thought is that we are a good platform, you know, for getting new ideas to move something that were unlocked, you know? In, in Peru, when you have a 54 billion portfolio and you have 50% of the kid, children under five with anemia, you know, by investing in poor communities, you can really alleviate poverty, which is the mission of the World Bank, you know, poverty alleviation and share value, you know, and, and, and what we're doing is that the, the government, the Ministry of Economic and Finance, the Ministry of Energy and Mines, and the President of Peru are convinced that the share value platform that is being established with IFC, Pronatura, and Water Resources Group will make a difference by providing a local share value, um, a local platform, territorial platform in the new communities where new investments are being started up. No? So, Quillabeco will start soon. They just signed an agreement for $5.4 billion, and we will be there from scratch you know, to make sure that all the funds are better used, the, the, the government uh, uses funds efficiently, we have the high level quality of professionals that can be there and develop the empathy to do it, and water will become a priority for that because that's a key need for them. So it's just a comment that I want to make. Great, thank you. So let me open it up um, for those, I know it may be a little bit challenging to jump in, but if those who are on the phone, we did want to reserve some time for questions. Um, and maybe if, um, for those whoever can jump in first, um, it's hard, I don't have a way to see any hands up, or maybe Alita or Meseret, if you can help identify, um, for those who might have questions, um, we welcome your questions, please. Hi, Karen, it's Roberta Barbieri at PepsiCo. I'll jump in if you don't mind. Um, just a, um, not a question really, just a comment, great job. Um, WRG team in Lima, um, really impressive work in a pretty short period of time and really a role model for um, what can be accomplished um, and what should be accomplished in, in other jurisdictions. So just a big thank you to the team. Oh, great. Thank you, Roberta. We appreciate that. And, and so great that the steering board members can join. Um, as I mentioned in the opening, for those who maybe joined a few minutes late, we've had such a challenge to go through all the work programs in each of the countries. And so using this approach of webinars to go dig a little bit deeper, even though we obviously can't go c completely um, into each work program, but just to give a sense. So thank you, Roberta. Others with comments or questions, please. Hi, um, this is Rochi Kimka from 2030 WRG. Um, uh, thanks to the Peru team for a great presentation. Um, I noticed um, the challenges uh, on the mining sector, which is something that uh, we grapple with, uh, for instance, in Mongolia as well. I was wondering how you're tracking improvements um, to reduce, uh, you know, conflicts or more improved um, water resources management at the local level particularly for the work in the mining sector. Okay. I'm going to start, maybe you can complement something. No, but, but you can see this slide, you know, I know if you can see it, you know, that's basically one reason, you know, for our concern, you know. Uh, conflicts stop things, you know. Conflicts uh, are high level, they produce high level uh, difficulties, you know, to stakeholders, you know, and, and most of them were related to, to social environmental causes in very much the, the major projects in Peru have been stopped because of water issues, no? And 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 and, and there's a slide here, very interesting slide about the cost of a conflict in destructive sector. You know? So, so I think there has been a real uh, an agreement, you know, a, a shared sure agreement by the government that they couldn't do it themselves. You know, so they are putting all their capacity, you know, to align with us and in the in the alliance that we are uh, for, uh, being part of, you know, to. To, to basically, you know, uh, address that. No, the, you see the numbers there, you know. Uh, when you're in operation uh, per week, uh, uh, a paralyzation of operation is $10 million. But you, when you're in initial operation, everything is less costly. You can develop this trusted environment which is needed, you know. Communities are sometimes ignored, you know, because they don't understand or they have expectations that companies don't meet, you know. In the case of Peru, 
generally companies take at least six or seven years to, to get profits, you know, and when they get profits, there is a law that means that you have to share it, you know, we call it royalties, you no? Know? But what happens on these seven years? And that's what the share value platform comes in, to meet vital needs with support of the private sector companies by better using government funds and also, you know, by creating change productive initiatives, and we have experts that we're going to be doing them in every region that we meet to not only reach domestic, but also international markets. I don't know, Patrick, if you want to add something? Yeah, and Mercedes. Yes, I would like to say that um, the central bank uh, informed that on the, fir on the second trimester um, of this year, Peru um, gross domestic product was 5.4%. Uh, and on the first semester, as a conclusion, it was 4.4%. Uh, this is higher than some neighbors as, uh, as Chile, for example, or Colombia. Uh, I wanted to say this, this, uh, these numbers because um, the 2030 Water Resources Group in Peru is not only looking for the growth of uh, public investment, no? But through this share value platform, I personally think, and we have discussed that, that we will also help the government, the, um, excuse me, the country, not only grow, but develop, which is different. Develop, which means, of course, growing infrastructure for water, but also accompanying and um, trying to, to meet solutions for the mining uh, problems that appear due to water issues. So the water is so deeply um, involved in the economy that I think it's going to be, this is going to produce good results, uh, growing but also developing. And the social issue is something that is very, very important for this team. The social issue is something that will be shown on, on this share value platform because communities, people that are in the rural areas will be involved, local governments. Local governments in Peru have a very low um, possibility of competences in organization. We are going to help them. So um, I, I really trust that this is a, a good idea to work with this industry. Great, thank you. Maybe I could uh, comment something about uh, the uh, building of uh, this uh, multi-stakeholder platform that uh, it seems very interesting for me, which is um, the fact that we in Brazil, we do have uh, multi-stakeholder platforms that are very institutionalized. Uh, we have a uh, national uh, Council of Water, we have basin uh, committees, but they are quite different of, uh, from the structure you, you built here. The difference is that um, they are established in order to uh, define public policies and to implement public policies. And you, it seems to me, and that's also a question to understand if that's true, uh, it's, that's quite different uh, from uh, uh, building common objectives and uh, developing the, the tools for these uh, common uh, objectives, which is something that you have been doing. In our uh, multi, very institutional, as I said, uh, multi-stakeholders platforms, uh, we have uh, regulators and water users. And there is this kind of permanent tension between them that makes it very difficult to uh, establish common objectives. Um, how did you deal with this? Initially, you know, uh, as I told uh, briefly, you know, this is a it was a trust building exercise. You know, it was a process. You know, in a process that. After two years of convening, we were able to deal with opposite, opposite sides, you know, SUNAS, which is the, 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 the authority that, that set up the tariff, you know, set up this underground water tariff, you know, and, and, and that means, you know, that some companies were in opposition, you know, and some discussions took place here. You know. 
And not only that, after we provide the technical support with the Swiss Developer Corporation, basically promoting the sustainability of the aquifer, you know, and, and the government approved, you know, the law. I mean, they, 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 they have to approve this, this tariff, you know. Things went to go through public audiences, where you have the people, you have the companies, you have the government, you know, discussing that in public audiences, tape, you know, and all of that about the importance of that. So, so we've been through, through things that have been uh, not consensus, you know, I mean, but, you know, our value added, I mean, a little value added has been that we have raised the issue of sustainability of water as mandatory. And everybody who comes here, you know, who have a different hat, takes the up that hat and they talk in a very uh, democratic way with Chatham rules, with the great facilitators. So, so at the end, we are looking for that common good. You know? And that common good sometimes may mean sacrifices or do something. You know? That's the, been the process in this initiative. You know? I know the other one. Yes, thank you, Stella, for that question. Uh, here in Peru, we have um, the, I would say a lack of uh, water governance. And uh, the National Authority of Water is in charge uh, to promote this water governance in, in a national way. Um, but the National Authority of Water depends or reports to the Ministry of Agriculture. But not only agriculture is is using the water, it's using mining, health, education, production. So I, th I think that is what has to, will have to, to change in future. But we had to make here in Peru a very strong effort because we also have uh, commissions of water and different groups in Peru that are already settled. But our, our real national governance as, an, as a, with a strong institution is just in development and we are helping them. We are very close to the National Authority of Water that comes to, is in our steering committee. And uh, we are trying to, to involve them in, uh, in a more in, in institutionalized way to, to go for the, for the governance. You know, water governance, uh, of course, you all know that is not the management of water. Governance means the interaction of all the stakeholders, private, government, communities, regional governments, local governments, no? and all the ministries. So, um, so, so we had to push that and we are gonna, we are gonna, we are gonna still push that. No? We, you will see that in our steering committee today at, at MITE. Yes, thank you. Great, thank you. Um, others? who would like to jump in with a comment or question. We still have some few minutes, please. I know maybe people are on mute and sometimes it's difficult to, to get off mute. Um, let me just give another second if there's someone who's, otherwise I do have a question, but um, if there's someone who wants to jump in. Okay, I know it's challenging when you're when you're on, on by phone as well. If I can ask um, Mercedes, um, you know, being a chair of the multi-stakeholder platform, you know, one of the things we have discussed is also um, sharing across, hopefully in the future, lessons with chairs in terms of just being the role of the chair. Um, I'm curious in terms of, you know, where do you see um, especially as 2030 WRG, one of our go the governing council and the steering board is a question of expanding to other countries and states. And I'm just curious, being a chair of a multi-stakeholder platform, as we look at this question of expanding to other countries and states, you know, any particular lessons, you've shared some lessons learned, but specifically as chair of a multi-stakeholder platform, um, you know, what do you see as key opportunities um, in designing these multi-stakeholder platforms based on the lessons that could be used in other countries, maybe here in Latin America, but also in Africa or in Asia as well. Yes, of course, Karin. I see good opportunities um, to move into, into other countries um, that do have uh, problems with the water governance and infrastructure, alliances, 
there's a lot of, of um, the situation of being afraid, the government about the privates, the privates about the, the government. And um, one thing that is very important when when you move to, a, to a, another, to a new country, would be the team. The team is very important. The person that represents officially the water resources group in the country needs the competences to, to have the ally, to, to make alliances, not to be afraid of, of um, moving into the people that are new in the government, the changes. Uh, we'll have to have a look, a good link with, uh, with um, enterprises too, where also people change a lot, no? New generations come, and which is excellent. And, um, and a teamwork is very important. The, the chair, of course, I have to learn a lot. I, I, I am very honored to be uh, the chair here in Peru, but I, I have a lot to learn from, uh, to make a cross learning from the chairs of other countries, from the Water Resources Group. But uh, I think that we need uh, something that we need to be is very serious in the sense that we must improve our support to the government to better uh, political uh, laws, uh, to better laws, but based not in just some talking and some feelings. All the, 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 the laws related to water, the development and the acceleration of investment on water should be related to data, to concrete data, to concrete information, uh, to be very serious. No, You know that governments and data are one of the bases for the, for the development of, of, of water. And of course, here in Latin America, we have countries like Ecuador, Colombia, well, we are already in Brazil, we are already in, in Mexico, but indeed, in, in, I suppose that in, in Central America also we do have uh, many, many, we could have many challenges. In Africa, I, I know we are in, in, in South Africa, but uh, we were in Petro Pretoria two years ago or three years ago with the Water Resources Group, and we learned that there's a lot of, of opportunities there in Asia still also, because Asia is the maquila for the world, and they use a lot of water, so we, we could um, yeah, help to improve many uh, policies and procedures there related to water, yes. Thank you, thank you. And especially, it's helpful to hear that, your perspectives, because 2030 Water Resources Group were just um, developing multi-stakeholder platforms in Ethiopia and Vietnam. So it's just a new process that started in the last year. Um, so certainly the team members will appreciate the perspective um, on how to bring some of the lessons learned. Obviously, each country is different. It's, you can't say Peru is the same as Brazil or, or, or Mexico or South Africa or others. But your lessons that you bring and share, I think, are very applicable in terms of how to bring together these types of collective action platforms for results in different countries. Um, we're going to be running out of time here, but I just did want to open up if there's any final comment or question um, for anyone on the phone. Okay, if not, uh, a quick question. Uh, hello, everyone. It's uh, Albayer from WRG Mongolia team. Uh, so uh, it's uh, great that the, the Peru team is going to work good. So I have just a quick question. What's the interact with the private company in the steering board the process? Because, uh, for example, in Mongolia, the, for example, the mining companies, the mining operation, mining sector is uh, the backbone in Mongolian, you know, the state budget and the government, the, the, the national economy, etc. But uh, sometimes the private companies is uh, communicating with the government without any interact with the, the, the WRG team or some MSP process. So in that case, just uh, want to learn what's the experience with the Peru team, how they interacting with the private companies. This is Dorch. No, right. this is Odd by R. Yeah. Oh, oh, 
Okay. <laughs> very nice. Very nice to hear from the from Mongo from the Mongolia team because the uh, our friend Mongolian friends were here uh, just a yes. year and a half ago. No. Yes. Um, well, uh, of course, mining companies have a bilateral agenda with the government, with the mining ministry. Uh, yes, they do, and they discuss their issues, but um, we invite them. We invite these uh, mining companies to our steering committee, and we visit them also in a bilateral water resources group and, and the mining companies. And we ask them, what problems do you have? How could we help you? How can we, um, in this share value project that we have, do you have any social problems? Uh, are there any conflicts that you you would like us to help? And we join them with the government. So we are like, uh, I, my English is not good, but we, I would say like an articulator between the government and the, and the, and the private. That will be, no? Um, but also remember that we have these committees, special subcommittees, like the one for water efficiency, that is a blue certificate, or the one that uh, the one for work for taxes, where the enterprises necessarily have to be linked with the government to get us the blue certificate. Which, uh, when you become a responsible uh, water company, you have to measure your water footprint. You have to do some to mitigate some uh, some projects to mitigate the use of water. And you have to link with your local government, with your re regional government, if you are a mining company, of course, and also on work for taxes. And Mongolia and Peru have a very similar situation. Uh, the the government uh, cashier, I would say, is the mine. Is the mine? Are the mines? I mean, we are two mining companies, and we have a lot in common. And I will take this advantage of this uh, webinar to tell you that we are still. Um, in the best disposition to help you with the program Work for Taxes that you were interested to implement in Mongolia. This will be a cross-learning. Of course, not exactly, but we have a base and we can discuss any time when you would like this to happen. Thank you, thank you. Ms. Mercedes. Thank you. We're at the end of our time, so I just want to thank everyone. I want to thank the whole Peru team, and I especially want to thank Mercedes, our chair, who's ready, getting ready for a steering committee meeting this afternoon. Um, thank you, everybody, for joining. Um, for those who weren't able to join, we did record and we have the PowerPoints. We'll circulate that. The plan is for the next webinar to be on India. Um, so we will be circulating more information on that. But thank you, everybody, for your time and attention today. And if you have more questions, absolutely, I know the team will be happy to follow up. Um, and again, thank you for the IFC and the World Bank in terms of the hosting arrangements and as we push forward in terms of addressing the serious water challenges here in Peru and elsewhere. Thank you.